Welcome to your first look brought to you by 6D Helmets here from State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. Round six of Monster Energy AMA Supercross. Kellen Brower here on site to cover some of the action from press day. Did a couple interviews with the guys, kind of felt out what the track is here. It's one of the biggest floor plans that Supercross visits all season long, so the track is massive. It's certainly uh, not only the rhythm lanes are really peaky and everything, but the track itself and the layout is uh, very vast. And of course, we'll show some of that action on track here in a minute. We'll also talk to some of the riders and see what they had to say leading into the sixth round of the series as we get ready to drop the gate here in Arizona. Of course, it's all brought to you by 6D Helmets. 6D Helmets is dedicated to the relentless pursuit of brain protection. 6D's patented omnidirectional suspension technology provides protection capabilities unmatched by any other helmet design. All right. Uh, Joe Shimoda, what did you do with the weekend off? Did you get any more uh, bike work done, work on yourself? What was it? Uh, thinking about a lot of stuff. Uh, thinking about uh, the stars whole weekend and whole week. Um, but yeah, sometime maybe I need to take a step back, rest, um, feel a little more re re refreshed uh, to come into this weekend. So yeah, not much, just stay chill. When it comes to the starts, have you been able to kind of pinpoint anything with yourself that is just a little amiss that's kind of missed so far, I guess? Yeah, like riding portion being good, I, I would say pretty consistently decent. But yeah, I just never, never struggled this much on the start. So uh, each weekend we try a new thing and trying to, trying to get there, you know. Um, and uh, once we figure it out, I just I, I think I'm just gonna stick to it. Okay. Yeah. So. All right, Ryder D. Francesco. Well, kit it out this week. You got all kinds of stuff across your gear. What's the, what's this all about? Yeah. So it's a collab between um, Puma, Palm Street Crew, and uh, Ricky Fowler. Has a lot to do with it. But um, yeah, we came out here. Waste management's obviously this weekend. Yeah. I spent a few days out there following Ricky around, and um, yeah, it's been nothing but but good vibes this week. Um, on the golf course. Did you get to go to the 16th hole and see that at all or no? Yeah, I sat the 16th hole for probably four hours yesterday. Oh, nice. um, but yeah, and then Wednesday I followed Ricky around for six holes or so and um, it's crazy. Like he was showing me a lot of things that they do. It doesn't even make sense. Yeah. Um, and then obviously we also have the same stuff that probably wasn't make sense to him. So um, yeah, it's, it's cool to uh, collab with these guys and um, Troy always brings something different in, and uh, I think it's grow the sport a bit. Yeah. Uh, switching gears to this, this is one of the biggest floor plans we go on all year. Is this something you look forward to, this long track and this kind of dirt? Yeah, I've always been good here. Um, I think it kind of fits the West Coast style a bit um, with the slick dirt, longer than Wayne's, um, hard packed. So I think it should be just another day at the practice track. And uh, yeah, we like to go big in the rhythm. So yeah, it should be a fun weekend. Um, well, I'm going to ask you about that to start then. Talon Hawkins, uh, what's the change of the hair? What's up with it? Just felt like something different. I've always wanted to, I've always wanted to shave my head and even bleach it, but honestly, I got a little peer pressured into it. I was talking about it. I was talking a big game, and then I, my dad and my best friend kind of put me to it. So okay. All right. now we're rocking the Slim Shady cut. So aside from this, what did you do at the off weekend? Any kind of bike testing or anything like that? Well, it's been it's been hard to ride yeah, in rain. SoCal right now. It's been raining for the past two weeks straight. So had to take a little trip up north, try to get some track time in. Rode a little bit outdoors, but it, it was honestly a pain in the ass to yeah. get on the track. Is there go. anything with the bike then you're still kind of searching for coming into this week that you're like hoping, okay, we figured it out now? No, it's more just me. I okay. just got to, it's all mental, I feel like. I just got to ride like I know how to ride. I got to stay off the ground. Didn't do a good job of that in A2, but we're looking to improve. Anything you're still kind of dialing in on the bike, I guess, going in around five? No, not really. Um, kind of got our our base setting at the beginning of probably December and really haven't changed much. Um, you know, a couple clickers depending on how the track is, but um, that's really about it. So uh, the bike's in a really good place right now and I just need to to start doing my job. So that's uh, what it comes down to. How's the, uh, would you even call this a retirement tour? Like, are you soaking it in week to week that way? Yeah, I was just actually talking about that because I'm not retiring. Yeah. I'm just kind of quitting racing full time. I'm still going to keep racing after, you know, this year. I love racing. I think it's good to wake up with that purpose and that drive, you know, but just a different schedule, yeah. something more worldwide. And I don't know, I, I seriously still don't know what I'm doing next year, but it, that's kind of like an idea to keep racing around the world. And uh, yeah, I think that would be a lot of fun. You know, I'm 32 now. 
33 next year. So if I could do that for a few more years, because I think sometimes when you fully just retire, you know, it, it, it's really hard. Yeah, so yeah. I don't want to do that. I want to keep racing. I love training. I love riding my bike. I just don't, you know, I'm just not at the top, top level anymore. Right. And uh, which is fine. I've had a good run. And uh, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. All right, Jerry Robin, Glendale. Uh, what's your take on Glendale? You like this place? Yeah, it's actually, usually it's my favorite race. So I'm looking forward to it. I love the dirt here and the stadium is big. So like the lap times are long and rhythms are really spread out. It's usually my favorite race. So I'm looking forward to it. Up and down kind of start to the year for you. But how have you actually felt with everything on the bike? Uh, bike wise, I feel great. Uh, just my starts are like kind of mid pack, so you got to clean up those. And when I have gotten a good start, um, obviously it's 450 class, so it's, I mean, everyone's hauling ass. So, it, I mean, it's tough. And I kind of blew it last week, which is on me. I just messed up in the whoops, and it is what it is. For your sake, as a privateer, you had to go all the way to Detroit and then back here this week. Was it kind of crazy that, that week and a half, I guess? Yeah, and it wasn't too bad this week because it's been raining so bad where I live in California. and it, I mean, we haven't rode or done anything, so you can't even go outside hardly. So, uh, I mean, it wasn't too bad this week, but when it, I think it's like April and the weather's good in California, it's going to be kind of a bummer to do the three-hour time change and long flights. But.